Namaste and welcome to our continuing series Interviews with Aurobillians. Today it is an honor to have Anandi Cheng with us. Namaste. Namaste. Anandi, tell me how you first heard of Sri Aurobindo and Mother. Mm. In a book, through a person, how did it happen? By chance, on my travel to India. Ah, and when was that? What year? 2014. And traveling from where? From China. Um, so I was born and grew up in China. I worked for some years and then I started to be a freelance translator. And then I traveled to many places around the country and uh, to a few other countries. And other countries? Yes, including Thailand, Indonesia, South Africa, Britain, etc. Oh my God. Then it has been a dream for me and for many people to travel around the world. Oh yes. Yes. And I had that dream and I, at one point I felt I'm ready for a worldwide travel. Oh. And uh, so, which place to start with? So I chose India. To begin with? Oh, to begin with oh, a see. worldwide travel in 2014. Right. After spending the Chinese New Year, um, I got myself prepared and I landed in Mumbai, in an Indian friend's home uh, with whom I I had contact before through emails and work mm. exchanges. Ah. So I stayed in their home for half a month. Uh, tried all kinds of Indian cuisine. Yes. And went to temples, markets. And in their home, there is a, a big photo of Raman Maharshi. And their whole family, including their father-in-law, are disciples of Raman Maharshi. So at the end of that um, stay, they said, you must go to Tiruannamalai. Ah, yes. So course. they booked um, a place for me in the guest house there. And I traveled alone to Tiruannamalai, where I stayed for one week. I climbed the mountain and stayed in the ashram. Went into the cave. Went into the cave and did all that. And then one day I felt there was some free time for me. Uh, so how to spend that free time? And normally I like to read. So I went to the round white building behind, uh, which is the library there, ashram library. I went inside and uh, tried to look for a small book that can, I can read for one or two hours. There were many shelves of books and I found one and I can still very vividly remember the name of the booklet. It's called The Biography of the Mother. I opened the book and read about this experiment of Auroville that is um, human unity in diversity and then I came straight to Auroville. That was it? That was it. Yes. You know that Sri Aurobindo called Ramana Maharshi a spiritual Hercules. Uh, Hercules? What does it mean? Hercules. Hercules is the great... The great war. The great warrior. Okay. Yes. But before that, before reading that book, I had never heard of Oroville, never heard of Shurabindo and the mother. Oh. So I came, stayed for one week in Central Guest House, and it, it felt clear to me that there is something there which was special. Um, that I need to come back to, to stay, to stay longer. 
So next year in 2015, I came back and stayed for one month in transformation. In transformation. Yeah, mm-hmm. the Samata guest house right now mm-hmm. in the round rooms. And then I started to volunteer in Machamandik, oh. uh, picking the fallen leaves around the entrance mm-hmm. area. I enjoyed it a lot. And then I went away and somehow next year I, I felt I was fully prepared to come and join Oroville. So in September 2016, I came. I came and started the process. In 2017, I came back again with an entry visa. So now I'm three years here without leaving Oroville for summer or for other things. How much of Sri Aurobindo and Mother did you read or while you were in Oroville? Mm. I take it their books were avail- available. Yes, I read the um, Sat Prince book. The Adventure of Consciousness. The Adventure of Consciousness. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And um, some questions and answers from the mother. Some short stories. Um, what they have written on China, Chinese people. And. Um, Mother's Agenda, some of them, mm, Savitri, not, Sav- the, not the whole book, but some of it. Passages. Passages, and um, the compilation of uh, Mother's Words on Oroville. Uh, uh, yes. The two volume. Gilles. Uh, was that Gilles had And, and Gilles compiled. and I will be doing a whole series starting probably tomorrow or Monday. Okay. Long series with Gilles. Okay. And there are some compilations. Um, for example, Integral Healing. And a, f- a few other small booklets. Um, for example, Youth. Um, dreams. Um, mantra. So on different topics I have read. And what do you feel at this point might be your direction in life? Um, what kind of work at the Matrimandir or are you interested in certain of these areas that you've read about? Healing, yeah. etc. I would say I have an interest in all of them. <laughs> in all of them? Wonderful. Yes, because Sure, Window says all life is yoga. Yes. But obviously, for me, uh, all life has not yet turned uh, turned into a yoga. Okay. Yes, it's in a process, mm-hmm. but uh, a very interesting beginning. Um, my focus in future would be reading more, putting more of them into practice, really fully understanding them and uh, embodying more and more and translating them, some of the texts, into the Chinese language because Mother once gave, to, gave a message to the Shura um, uh, uh, kind of uh, organization that was established in Hong Kong uh, to say, let the eternal light dawn on the eastern horizon. Um, Hu Shu the ashramite. I knew him. You knew him. He stayed uh, for 27 years in the ashram yes. and translated most of Mother and Shurabindo's works, major works, into Chinese. And there are some other works that haven't been translated. Some that uh, relates to, for example, Oroville. There are short oh. mother's short stories, plays, uh, savagery. Uh, a lot of still work is still is is yet to be done. And so, you said you were a translator. I was a translator for some years before. What, what did you translate? What languages? Um, English into Chinese. 
English into Chinese. So, this is marvelous. Yes. Wonderful. Could you talk a little bit with us about your experience of China? Mm. Whatever you would like to say. China is a land that has the same promise of unity and diversity. In fact, um, well, the, one of the slogan I would say, um, that, that we often use, is, uh, is unity in diversity. Mm. The same thing in the Chinese language. We call it he er bu tong. Ho, he, harmony, er means and various, bu tong means different. So harmony, but di there is harmony, but different. So it is uh, unity in diversity in essence. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at the essence of the Chinese culture, classical, ancient Chinese culture that have uh, been somehow maintained up till now, it is that. The Deep. same kind of uh, alignment of uh, heaven, earth, and man, harmony. Harmony not only within the, the mini universe that each being is, but with the outer larger universe, kind of mirroring each other. And in ancient China, there was a text on what a unified world can look like. Mm. And it has been kind of uh, the text that uh, children recite. Now, I'm told from people who have recently visited China that there is fear in the people. Is that correct? I would say um, the whole world, much of the whole world is now <laughs> has certain fears, including all of you, which is a uh, is a place where all the difficulties Absolutely. concentrate. In China, I haven't been in China for three years, so I don't know. There, I would say, a lot of different uh, trends, movements, oh. forces are there. There are fears, fears of the basic things that we need, for example, clean air, yes. healthy food, Yes. And, uh, yeah, the basic things. Sometimes because of the need for uh, modernization, uh, for material progress, um, the integral other aspects need when to be... I think um, <coughs> it is in a process of, uh, of uh, finding its own clarity transforming itself to see um, it's not only the economy alone that matters. Yes, of course. And there are many different aspects to China, which I would say on a person who has never been to China or have only visited a few times can, cannot fully understand or appreciate or be able to really help contribute to its progress. Uh, one interesting joke is um, of people who have been in China like with deep contacts and they say people who come to China in the first two, three years, they really wanted to write about China. Write a book, write a report, tell stories about China. After spending time in China for 10 years, they became more silent. Interesting. They become part of the kind of the beauty, the glory of China, also its imperfections. Can you tell me anything uh, horticulturally about the land and the, and the species of plants? I understand China has so great a wealth. It's such a um, yeah, diverse, we have such diverse plants and um, yeah, animal species. Are they being preserved? 
Um, I, I don't fully know much about this, uh, mm -hmm. this topic. So I would say from my own experience of traveling around, there may be some places that have been carelessly kind of um, mm -hmm. damaged, uh, not very much well cared for, but now there is a rethinking the social society and people are rethinking, re-looking at how we, how we coexist well harmoniously with the nature. Of course, that happens. Oh. And uh, in places where there is a lot of natural diversity, Mm, it is still there. Oh. It's, uh, and I would say the Chinese people since ancient times have perhaps discovered the, the beauty, the use, edible and medicinal use of, of more plants than other nations oh, in the world. Yeah. Agree, yes. Yeah, we have uh, uh, ancient classics on the medicinal plants where the um, they were kind of uh, tested and tried. Now, what did you translate from English to Chinese when you were working as a translator? <laughs> <laughs> um, everything that the, the clients uh, from different uh, fields of work, they, they need from cultural events, books to, oh. for example, sports, I, I started to translate two years before the 2018 Olympic Games. Oh. That was one inspiration for me to, to go to Beijing and, and to really to be part of this uh, that must have common been a, big event. Must have been a great experience. Yeah. It was. Wow. Yeah. And your parents? My parents uh, uh, were farmers. I was born and grew up on a farm, which, which is the reason why I can now go back to nature, go back to find my roots in the, in the land, in the soil, in plants, in animals, in, in finding a way to really see how humans are not the really, is, is really part of nature. What did your parents farm? We... We used to grow rice, wheat, all kinds of beans, mm. uh, over 10 different uh, varieties of fruits, uh, oh so many greens, vegetables, uh, potatoes, peanuts, and uh, tomatoes. Uh, it's, it's a huge diversity, and we used to have a, a, a boar to plow the land, plow the fields, have chicken, cats, dogs, uh, ducks. It sounds like so, you had a wonderful childhood. <laughs> and all the, all the frogs. Oh. Um, so it was a you countryside lifestyle where, you, where we used to have everything that uh, yeah, yes. can sustain oh. us. Now what did you do when you went to Thailand and these other places? Sometimes to travel, sometimes to also work. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So how much of the world did you get to see before so, landing finally in <laughs> Orville? So, <laughs> in fact, um, it, it is a, a question that I have asked myself many times because my initial plan was to really do a worldwide travel. There is so much of the world that I haven't seen yet. The reason that has really kept me in Oroville, in spite of all the challenges that I face here, is traveling in the inner world matters as much as traveling in the outer world. And for me, it's, it matters a lot more. So for me, in Oroville, it is, it is a concentrated place where I can, and anybody who is open to it, can, can travel in the inner world and to perfect the being, to make progress. I remember when, I, when we first met mm -hmm. last week on Sunday, 
And when I asked you to do transformation, you said, that's why I'm here. Yes, yes. <laughs> what are the problems that you have faced in Oroville? Some of them, if you can talk about them. Because mm. people speak to me about all kinds of things. and Yeah. And everything should be open to everyone. Uh, for me, the difficulties are not so much in the physical environment. Mm -hmm. Some people find it hard to adapt to the weather, mm -hmm. living conditions oh, yes. here, to the pooches, mosquitoes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or the, some people could have injuries, diseases, various reasons or financial difficulties that they find they could not sustain themselves here. Mm -hmm. I have experienced these things as well, but these are not the difficulties that could really, that are difficulties for me. Uh, I don't find them difficulties. For example, I like the monsoon season, I like the hot summers here, oh. uh, so it's no problem for me. Mm -hmm. And also mother says, if we kind of... Uh, we are one with the weather, we can actually enjoy it instead yes. of kind of um, staying away from the sun or the rain. And I find it's, um, it's a nice way to be enjoyed in the nature. And you have no problem with the food? No problem with the food. I like the idli, chapati, dosa, a lot of things. I cook them myself and I eat them in restaurants, in the canteens. So that's no problem. For me, the biggest challenge is um, it's the imperfect human nature. In, in me and in a community which has the highest possible ideal, that even is, it's beyond the human imagination, I would say. Absolutely. Our ideal is so high that when we look at the realities, our own realities, the little details of life, Sometimes I find there is so much to improve on. <laughs> and uh, sometimes the circumstances present themselves. Uh, it's just like shining a mirror on myself, on people, on the situations that it feels like this is exactly opposite to what we aspire for. Yes. And of course there is a reaction sometimes that how can this be? This is untruth, truth, ignorance, light. They all exist here. And uh, I am not fully transformed, but that's my aspiration. So I guess it's the same with uh, a lot of people who have come, chosen to come and stay here. And then this is a place where where the physical, vital, mental, all the things, they can come up and show in a very, sometimes subtle, sometimes very intense ways. Yes. And I really um, get a lot of clarity here that, like people everywhere have found out throughout the ages, that I cannot change the outside world without changing myself. I have no expectation that whatsoever of changing the others changing the circumstances yeah without first having this self-reflection mirroring on what is happening inside yes. me and this can be as Shurabindo has said an ordeal that we need to go through do you come to the ashram yes from time to time yes i do and come to the samadhi yes in your experiences and relations with other. Mm. Have you found Oroville very mixed in mm. its aspiration? I would say that there is a lot of layers of, uh, it's like, uh, Oroville is like a diamond. And each of our heart, I feel, is like a diamond with many different facets. And there is the inner light, 
there is the divine light, outer light that can shine upon it, and to reveal its full beauty, uh, then it should not be really kept in the darkness. And I find that um, when I am in a certain state, I meet with certain situations and certain kinds of people. When I shift it to another state of uh, being, of consciousness, consciousness yes. yes, and then I meet with other situations, or I, I can face a situation, the same situation in a different way. So, so that's um, sometimes even the most uh, um, unimaginable or difficult situation can amuse me. Uh. <laughs> can amuse me because uh, it feels like, uh, yeah, it, it must when, somehow be transformed. They have asked me to be the chairman for the Matri Mandir. Garden uh, Design Corps. Garden Design Corps. Mm. And uh, I would very much like to work with you in the gardens one day. Um, there will be something so beautiful that we have no idea right now. But um, you have read what Mother has told me, I'm sure. Yes, I have read. Yeah. And I worked in Botanic Gardens for one year, in my newcomer year. I stayed there, worked oh, there. Oh, I see. Wonderful. Yeah, and uh, what I feel now, what is happening in the Oroville community as a whole, in different uh, aspects of the community, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, crises and conflicts are coming up, which is um, a coming up of, uh, of the scenes that need to be looked at, reflected on after 50 years of development. Yes and to go for what is true light, life, wealth, and power, which are the four gardens that will come soon. Yes, yes. I feel there is a coloration with the gardening design progress ah. of what is happening in the, in the society, <coughs> yes. in the community. Well, you're quite right. has a direct coloration with the development of the gardens. When my wife, Mary Helen, wrote to Mother, um, when the beginning of the structure started, Mother wrote, the gardens are as important as the Matrimandia. Yes. A powerful statement. Yeah. Because we have to create beauty in everything we do. And I feel that you have that feeling of that essential beauty that must be with anything we touch. I, I understand the sense of beauty, but to train myself into manifesting that beauty, still there needs to be a process. Hopefully the gardens will be that. <laughs> so, what are you looking forward to in the next few years in your life in Orville? Will you, uh, well, let's just take that for now. Uh, what do you see happening in Orville, the changes in yourself, in others? Uh, we know that the government has been involved. Mm -hmm. Mr. Modi has come and has been very positive about Orville. Mm -hmm. What do you see, if anything? I see Oroville having um, more, having a closer con connection, con interaction with uh, with India, the Indian government, with uh, the whole world what we call the outside world, mm. perhaps will no longer be the outside world anymore because people keep coming in and going out, bringing in their energies, talents, yes. contribution, yes. Yes. contribution, financial contribution and contribution in different kinds of works, music, man, many, many things. And then they also contribute to their difficulties, their challenges, limitations. Absolutely. And then bringing out something. 
back to their places. Mm, I would say as Orville as a kind of a, a going through a process of a inhaling and ex exhaling and inhaling inhale and exhale with the entire world in that process and um, Orville itself has many challenges right now on the economic um, organization and yeah people's uh, relationships um, many challenges which is uh, quite intense sometimes and uh, quite unexpected or uh, in a way it's it's except it's natural that it can happen here because it's happening also around the world which can be mirrored here to be worked on in a concentrated uh, place yes here is an awareness and uh, an intention to work things out that does not make it easier no, but it there is a hope that by working it out each one involved in the process can have more clarity more healing for the Oroville itself and for the can the effect can ripple out to the entire world I I believe in the next one year two years in the next few years Oroville will move to a truer Oroville to its ideal to to the Oroville charter to the dream to be a true Oroville'ian not only in the mental understanding in the speech but in the deep alignment in every action. Wonderful. That's, uh, that's why we are here anyway. Because if it's not that true, if the text remains in the books, not in our beings, then there is yes. a disparity that we, our inner being will not be happy about. Yes. So that full alignment needs to come gradually. You know my daughter, Shally? Mm -hmm. You don't know Shally? Yeah, please introduce her one uh, day. I will one day. She's now in England for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, she's with the uh, central governing group of Oroville. Mm -hmm. um, and she built the high school mm. um, and ran it for 20 years. So I'd like you to meet her. Anandi, thank you so much for a very enlightening talk and to learn a bit about your aspiration, your experience, will help many people who see this video. Thank you. Thank you very much.